attention. Can we, with Jesus' joy, celebrate our Father as He takes us up in this session? Please put your hands together for the King of Kings. I said put your hands together for the King of Kings. You clap like you rented your hands. Hallelujah. Now please just hold the hand of somebody. Father, we agree tonight in the name of Jesus that your name will be glorified in this place. And we ask you, dear Lord, for your wisdom and for understanding to be imparted into our minds. Let there be a difference in our lives by the end of this conference. Let there be a shift from glory to glory. And I pray especially for those that are joining us, streaming online from different parts of this nation. Some of them are traveling, some are in their office offices some at home i pray that the same measure of grace will be imparted to them and let your name be glorified if you didn't borrow your amen say amen Amen. in jesus mighty name even if you borrow the amen or your clap use it well before you return it now clap your hands for god as you take your seat in the presence of god Amen. Amen. I just opened my jot and some money. Amen. So, no, don't clap like that. You know, it's not, it's not for you to celebrate. I saw it in the house of God, so it automatically is God's money. Amen. But you have to come to that level of yieldedness. You don't look at the things you have and think you first. Okay, if you want God to bless you and prosper, you don't think you first, as enticing as it can be. You think about God, you think about others, and God will ensure that you not lack. The Bible says a liberal soul shall be made fat, not a stingy soul. Amen. And this conference will attack that demon of stinginess in Jesus' name. All right, it's good to see everybody again. We'll go straight to the Word of God this morning. I will do teachings by the grace of God this morning, so I'll be very calm so that we can understand. Uh, It is important, you know, this is the morning period, so this is when your, your mind, your brain is active, especially after having a good night rest and after having a healthy breakfast. So this is the time to impart a lot of knowledge. And then if we have time in the afternoon, maybe we can now... Uh, minister and pray and do some impartations as God will help us in Jesus name so please I want you to pay attention make sure you're not distracted if it's not necessary don't go out except it is necessary so you can catch everything um, that the Lord will say to us in Jesus name and uh, I know that a lot of us that are still coming on the way on our way I just discovered that a lot of people are under the weather this season. What I mean is a lot of people are sick. Amen. So we rebuke that spirit of affliction in Jesus' name. You know, the weather has changed, so it's difficult for some people to adapt bodily-wise. So I thank God that we are here. And myself, I would have been trapped with it yesterday. Couldn't sleep Thursday night to Friday morning, and then on Friday morning I called, started calling our medical people. You know, it's easy to believe God for others, but when it's your own self, it's Panadol you refer to. So I started calling medical people this, this. After making all the calls, while I was lying on the bed, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, the same authority that you have in the name of Jesus for others, you can exercise it for yourself. And he told me again, he said, learn to be a recipient of your own anointing. So I laid my hands on my body and I commanded the affliction to go. And I'm here, strong and healthy. So you learn it and do it for yourself. 
Amen. Yes. The next time you try it, you will discover how less of your faith you have for the God that is in you. And the Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. So you must believe the God that is inside of you. Amen. So that's how I got my relief. So if there's anybody that is sick, that's the same way you'll get your relief this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So are we ready for today? The teaching we are going to do this morning will bless us. I remember it was a promise I made to us uh, some times ago, some few months ago. And I said we were going to discuss it at the sisters conference. So that's why you notice that I carried old jotters this morning. Amen. So I'm going to be practical. As a matter of fact, I had them get me some um, slides so that we can see it and then be able to work on it. I don't know if the projector is available so that if this TV is not working, we can get, get it for the next presenter. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I told us before that there were two females in the garden. Have you heard me say that before? Those of you that, you know, attend New Matter always have said it before. That in the garden of Eden, there were two females. And I know a lot of you have been waiting. You went and you searched your Bible and said, no, Apostle, just come and apologize. Let's see. Amen. And I assure you, I'm not going to apologize. I will show you today. Amen. You see, the word of God is God's revealed word. It was written by the inspiration of God that came on human minds. All right? Now, because it is a product of revelation, you can read it and get information. But if you must gain understanding the seal that is on it spiritually must be broken, must be open to you. It takes the Holy Spirit to show you things that you can pass over on a daily basis. All right? And let me tell you something. Your faith is not built on the knowledge of the Word of God that you have. No. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. If you heard it, it means someone spoke to you. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 It says you shall hear a voice behind you That will say this is the way Walk in it So if you heard it it was because the spirit of God Spoke to you It's not what you read in the Bible Faith does not come by what you read in the Bible Faith cometh by hearing And hearing by the word of God Not the Bible Are you hearing me? So it is important that you read the word of God uh, Read the Bible to get the information Get the knowledge Okay, because wisdom will only come when you have sufficient knowledge. Proverbs 24 verse 6 says, A wise man is strong, and a man of, under- and a man of knowledge increases in strength. So, what it just means is, a wise man knows that for him to be wiser, he needs more knowledge. So, you need to stuff your knowledge bank of the word of God in your mind on a daily basis. That's why it's good to read the Bible. In fact, there is a blessing that comes from reading the Bible. Are you with me? Why are you quiet? Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. So there's a blessing that comes from reading the Bible, but your faith as a believer that will move mountains, that will create possibilities for you, that will open doors for you, that will shift you in your knowledge of God from one level of glory to another will only come when what you know becomes a revelation jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth not by the word that was written okay sorry that was verse 5 not verse 6 by the word that proceeds from god so sometimes in your life you you may know so much of scripture but if you are in a fix and you need god to help you God will take out of the abundance of the knowledge of scripture that you have. Are you hearing me? 
It's important that you hear what I'm saying before we go to the word of God. It's out of the abundance. You, you guys can sit down. You can sit down. Okay? Yeah. It's out of the abundance of, thank you. It's out of the abundance of what you know already. It will not jump from the Bible and enter your mind. That's why if you notice that you are stranded in life and there's no direction, it just, it ha- that situation has only revealed to you a bigger problem. That the real problem is not the situation you were stranded in. Because God can get you out of that. The real problem is that you are bankrupt of the word of God. So even if he wants to help you, how will he help you? Are you hearing me? No, I'm talking to ladies. That's why uh, I have to go like this. Because we need to change the narrative. The narrative that is being sold now is that women don't have time to study or read books. And that's wrong. All right? So it is important you have sufficient knowledge because time and again, the Holy Spirit will come and breathe on your mind. And that's when revelation will come. In this context now, we call it illumination. When he takes a scripture you already know and then gives you understanding in it. That's, we call that one illumination. Are you hearing me? And I pray that that will happen as we learn the word of God this morning in Jesus' name. So, there were two females. In the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us from chapter 1 of Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth. Chapter 1 is a sum total, I've started the teaching now. Chapter 1 is a sum total of, or a, a, sum, a summary of what happened in creation. But chapter 2 gives you the details. Do you understand what I'm saying? Chapter 1 is a summary. So chapter 1 was like a rush walk. It's in chapter 2 that Moses began to give you the details. That's why in chapter 2 verse 1 he said, Now this, is it verse 1 or verse 4? He said, Now these are the generations of the heaven and earth. The descendants, in other words, what he's saying is, what I'm writing now is a proceeding. This is the detailed procedure of how everything you saw in chapter 1 came into being. Okay? So you see that in chapter 1, God said in verse 26, Let us make man in, his, in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Alright? And in verse 27, So God created man. In verse 26, he said, let us make man. But in verse 27, he didn't use the word make. He said, God created man in his image and after his likeness. He used one verse to summarize what you find detailed in chapter 2. A lot of details of it in chapter 2. But in chapter 1, he just used one verse to summarize everything. That's because... What happened in chapter 1 was what I called the creation of existence. Sorry, the creation of purpose. Chapter 1 is the creation of purpose. Chapter 2 is the formation of existence. God created the purpose of man in chapter 1. And everything you find that happened in chapter 1 concerning man was not a physical reality. It was only a pigment of God's imagination that thing happened in God's mind so God created man in his own image verse 27 of chapter 1 so God created man in his own image and after his likeness male and female created he them please close this door I don't need the sound of that generator close that door please so male and female created he them and God blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and what have dominion all that thing didn't happen physically it happened in god's mind because the word create in verse 27 when you look at it in the original hebrew that it was written it is the same way it's the same word that is used when you are imagining something so chapter one everything that happened about man happened in god's mind and that's why God created mind in a man. So that before you see anything in your life, it must first exist here. 
and don't expect to be a millionaire physically if you are not living in the millions here are you hearing me a lazy man can never prosper quote me anywhere if you find a lazy man with money is a lazy is that's what i call the prosperity of a fool i guarantee you that he didn't work for it it entered his hand and he's going to leave as soon as he came so you see that before god gives something to you he ensures that you have the mental and spiritual capacity to host that thing and to sustain its relevance so chapter one you have the creation of purpose chapter two you have the formation of existence in chapter two that's when god now decided to make let me bring it into physical or tangible reality so the bible says in verse is this verse seven now or verse eight god formed the lord god formed man from the dust of the ground you see where i got the word formation of existence form he formed man from the dust of the ground and man became a living soul that means there was no spirit in man that time are you people here yeah. or let's just close this and just do a normal preaching point number one this point number two this no 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 god didn't send me to motivate you i am sent as light to you all right so that your eyes your understanding can be open you will rule and have dominion on earth on the strength of your understanding there every miracle is the product of a transformed understanding a transformed mind did you hear what i said so miracles are not accident it starts here so and then when god created the male species of man you know the story he put man in the garden and all of that and it was time for the woman to come the bible says in verse 18 god himself said you know there is no helper for man he said i'll make a helper comparable to him according to new king james after that statement instead of you to see in the next verse you know when god says i will make a helper suitable for him you will think that in the next verse god will just go and create the woman and that's it the next verse the bible says god brought all the animals that he had made to adam abby but i thought in the previous verse you said there's no helper for man so i thought that after that verse where he said i will make a helper suitable for him the next verse you just see that and god molded a woman and he breathed into hand the woman with a figure eight and then walked into the garden no you see god had already finished the, the the model of creation he had finished the design in chapter one he was not in a hurry all right so before he will send this woman that he created into the garden he needed the man to have an understanding of her purpose otherwise he, that man that he created will abuse that woman so when you find a man that beats a woman or verbally abuse a woman trying to intimidate her is he, he lacks understanding of the purpose of the woman he married such a man should not be married well if you want to clap you can clap better are you hearing me there are some men that they are good though, but they should just serve as better serve as red, reverend fathers even now reverend fathers are getting married they should just serve as priests unto god not because of anything but you see if you don't understand the purpose for why god created i believe that the woman is the crowning of god's creation yes i'm, I'm telling you as a man yes they are not here so i can say it you know so that some people will not squeeze their face and be looking and then they just stay at the door say apostle if you pass here if you pass here so yeah because man was the summit of god's creation and among the model the female was the most improved version so god yes and just before you become very excited that's why even you yourself must fully understand the purpose of your creation 
before you start your way to destiny. Otherwise, you'll find yourself competing with other people. Otherwise, you'll find yourself moving with the trends. Anybody you see, any woman you see living her life based on what she sees on social media does not understand why she was created. She's a girl in a woman's body. Are you hearing me? So where am I now? Okay, we've not... So, but the next verse, you see that God went and gathered animals and brought to man. Where is the helper now? And the Bible says, to see what Adam will call them. You know why? Because when you read verse 20, the Bible says, Adam named all of them. But there was no helper. That means God wanted Adam. It's like a puzzle. Search and see if the helper I have promised you is among them. By that, I will know if your understanding is accurate enough before I can release the creation, the helper to you. Because Adam would have looked at a turkey and said, Ah, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Can't you see the way the younger, this is a woman. And if Adam has said that, I hope you know God wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. Because in chapter 1, God said, Let them have dominion. That means we would have all been products of a man and a turkey. Please sit down, sir. Thank you. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. So, no, we have to go back to Genesis. We have to go back to the beginning. So we can fully understand God's purpose for our lives. That's why the theme is God's woman. Okay? We want to, we want to know because God created something. But now we are seeing another thing. So we want to go back to the beginning. To find the design, the perfect model that was created for the woman that God made. Are you with me? So, God sent all the animals to Adam. And you know, the Bible says, he that finds a wife. And then the Bible says, but amongst them was no helper found for Adam. Because he that finds a wife... Finds a good thing. And God said, okay, this man truly, he understands. I can now send a woman. And then the Bible says, you know, he took the rib of the man and all of that. I don't want to go into that. And then he brought the woman to Adam. From the point where God brought the woman to Adam till the end of chapter 2, God did not talk again. Put that verse for us, please, on the screen. The point where God brought the woman to Adam. Let me just correct something. Because that verse 24 that says a man shall leave his father and why, why, why. It was not God that said it. You can't prove that God said that. Meanwhile, we have been believing that it was God who said it, isn't it? What's wrong with, okay. Put the verse where God created the woman and brought her now. I want, I want us to see something. That should be verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman. And he brought her. And you notice he didn't say he made into a woman. He made into woman. Because this was a definite individual. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, from this point to the end of the chapter, who said? Adam. So, if you find marriages breaking, and you say, oh, but the Bible says, what well, God has joined together, let no man put out. Why are we still having broken marriages? It's not God that said it. If God said it, he will back his word. You are at home. Some of you need to drink coffee to catch what I just said to you. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called. Because the moment you give a name to something, you have created the identity of that thing and you have defined the purpose and the existence of that thing. When Adam looked at the horse and said, horse, 
he defined the identity, the creation of purpose, and the existence of that animal. When he looked at the lion and said, lion, he defined the identity, the purpose, and the existence of lion. That's how the lion will be. God from that time till now has not changed anything in the life of a lion. So when God brought the woman to Adam, he didn't wait for God to give her a name. He carried his mouth and gave her a name. So even though this woman was created by God, the formation of her existence and her identity came from Adam. It was Adam that called her woman. What God wanted to create was a helper, not woman. Adam was the one that said, woman. Oh God, you guys. Is it too deep for you? No, we've not gone anywhere. It's just, we're just doing, going round and round and round. So this is Adam's creation. She shall be called what? Woman. Because she was taken out of man. Go ahead, next verse. Adam is still talking. Therefore, a man, therefore, this English language, therefore, when you see therefore in the next verse, it means it's a continuation of what happened in the previous verse. Who was talking in the previous verse? So when a man looks at his wife and says, you are a fool, he doesn't know that God, because of the headship and authority that God has given him, even if he's a drunkard, there is an anointing for that position. He has authority. Because he looked at the woman and said, fool, even if she's a talk-talking Christian, that's how she will live. Until the same authority corrects it. It has nothing to do with being born again or not. This is authority that God placed. That's why I don't marry a man who doesn't know God and doesn't understand his purpose. Because his tongue is a creative device. Now you look at the trend in our society. Society is evolving now, but you know, from the generation of our mothers and our grandmothers, the trend was that the woman was a second class citizen and was created for the kitchen. You know why? That's because there was a generation of men that said this is who a woman should be. And so all their women were like that. So even the school that your mother went to, you see how she was struggling to break a foundational curse that was established by her man. So you need to get married to a man who blesses you every day. You need to get married to a man who does not complain but prays. Because every time he opens his mouth, his headship and his office is coming to act. And even if he's an unbeliever, God will honor it. Because God is a God of protocol and order. God is not like us. Come by 9 a.m., you come by 10.30. God is not like that. If he was like that, you can't trust him. When you call on him and you need his power, his power would have gone on suspension. Or gone on strike like Asu. And you know what will happen to you then. So that's the reason why God is constant. His faithfulness is for you. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, even though you make me mad sometimes because of your ways, even though you drive me crazy because of your iniquity, but because I change not, you are not consumed. God is faithful for your, for your, for your, for your good. So every morning that you should give thanks to God because he's faithful. Even when you are sick. Because you know he doesn't change. This situation will only evolve to something better. Say amen to that. So there you have it. Adam called her woman. Chapter 3. That's the first female. Chapter 3. Verse 20. I'll show you the second female. So by this time, man had fallen in the garden, isn't it? But his headship, his authority, and dominion as man was still there. Are you hearing me? And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all 
living. This is a different female. This is a female that was, this is another female that was created after the fall. This was the female that ate the fruit and gave it to her husband. This was not the one that God created in chapter 2. God created a helper in chapter 2. This one, we are not seeing her as a helper. So how many did I point to you now? Two. Now go to the first slide for me. Let me show you the difference between these two females. Woman and Eve. Woman and Eve. Maybe when we outline their characteristics, you will be convinced. I hope I will be able to convince you and not to confuse you, as I say in debates. All right? No, not this one. Oh, this is the second one. We'll close with this one so that some people will not have heart attack because there are some things on that one that if some of you see it, you, start, you have to start repenting. All right. So in chapter 2, in verse 22, was one female, woman. Now in chapter 3, verse 20, another female, Eve. Let's look at their differences. The first point is that uh, under the woman this is the one that God created now this is God's woman she understands man's need okay so man's need is her purpose now what is man's need man was created to dominate notice I said want not need need man was created to dominate and rule and a woman was to be his helper Okay, so God's woman, which is the first one we see there, knows and identifies the need of her man. That the man was created to dominate and his need becomes her purpose. His need was that he needed a helper so that he could exert dominion, divine dominion on all that God created. So his need becomes her purpose. But if the other one, man's purpose is her desire. Man was created to dominate, but that's what she wants. Not to help him. She wants that. She wants to usurp authority. She wants the throne for herself. That's the woman that always shouts, gender equality, gender equality. Let me tell you the truth. I know we are civilized people, but if God should allow gender equality, eh? This world will be destroyed because there are certain things that only a man can change. It was a man that made us to fall. When Eve ate the fruit, nothing happened. When Adam ate the fruit, God entered the garden. That's why he didn't send a woman to die on the cross. It's a man he sent. Oh, you're not talking because I, I, I've gone. <laughs> but you believe what I'm saying. So, let, that's, let me just tell you, I don't, I'm not, I don't, if, if there's a man who abuses his wife, show me the man, I'm the one that will lock him up. I'm the one that will call police for him, make sure he's locked up. I will not charge him to court, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that we should not go to, just some of you don't even know scriptures like that, that we should not take a brother to court before an unbeliever. You don't know scriptures like that, you want to be a mother, you want to be married, what will you teach your children? When the two of them grow up now and they are fighting for their father's estate, brother will take brother to court. Then you'll be there, stop fighting now, stop fighting. You didn't show them scripture that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, don't take a brother. Well, let me. If I say that one, that would be too heavy. So let me leave it. So that's the first difference. For the woman, which is the one that God created, man's need is her purpose. So she sees the most or the greatest need in the life of a man and makes that her purpose. So as long as she's alive and in his life, she wants to fulfill purpose, which is to meet his greatest need. And his greatest need was that for him to have dominion as God placed him on earth, and to represent divine government on the earth, he needs a helper by his side. Together, we can dominate. There's a word called T-E-A-M, team. It means together, everyone 
achieves more. That's what it means. But the other one, which is a version of the fallen man, which is the woman of the world, is man's purpose that is our own. Point number two. For this woman, she knows that she's created to be a helper. And when she knows that and begins to walk in it, she comes into union, intimacy, and partnership with the Holy Ghost. Because the only other person called a helper in the Bible is the Holy Ghost. And I will send you the comforter, and he will abide with you forever. And I will send you the helper, and he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance. That's why I told you during the relationships, um, a family life series, I said, if you want to hear something again, tell a woman. But these days, our Instagram ladies, you tell them something, they forget. You are the one that will remind them. But you know what they will not forget? Louis Vuitton bag. Or Gucci bag. And with the shoe, it must match with the shoe. You understand? Meanwhile, the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, He will teach you all things as the helper and bring to your remembrance the things that I have shown you. So, this woman is the one that understands that she was created as a helper. It was Adam that called her woman, but her original definition is a helper. And the Bible says, God is the helper of the helpless. That's when you begin to partner with God and your true divine potentials in you will begin to come out. But let's look at the other woman. She's a saboteur. She's in partnership with Lucifer. Isaiah 14 verse 12. What did he say about Lucifer? How the hell fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning? And blah, blah, blah. He said, for you said in your heart, I will ascend. I'm not satisfied that they have it for themselves. I'm not satisfied that he's God. Can't I run another government? Why will he just be seated in the throne? All the glory ascribed to him. I can take some of it. He said, I will. I will. Can you get that verse for us? In Isaiah chapter 14. You will see that the word I will was used almost five times. Oh God. I think we need to buy new gadgets. TV and, and system and all of that amen who can get that scripture for us i think that should be isaiah 14 verse 13 from verse 13 who can read it quickly you will notice i will i will self it was used five times and i want to point this out not because i have any trouble with any lady but I, this is we have to be very conscious that the enemy we are dealing with is not us yes read sir Please give give that mic a volume. Your heart. Yes, go ahead. I will ascend into heaven. Number one, I will go on. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Number two, go on. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Number three, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. How many now? Four. Four. Go on. I will be like the most high. How many verses? Just two verses. Thirteen and fourteen. I will, I will, I will, I will, I want me. He doesn't buy anything for me, and I'm his girlfriend. He doesn't take me out. When will you give me money? This one is chop money. Oh, yeah, wear my own. I want, I want. And I'm not saying that you don't deserve those things. But when you insist that I must have it, because there are some women that counsel other women. You know, when a woman is, is working with Lucifer, this is the counsel she will give to her friend. Say, don't, don't, they, 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 doll yourself. If he not give you, come out and from the chop money. When you cook the food, instead of two meats, give her one meat. If he asks, tell her, say, that the money will he give you. Full stop, don't rise for market. We we'll call it white lie. Then on Sunday, they now come to church. There is something that makes me... Fun. At least give God from the offering, from that money you pinch now. No, they no give God. It's not about me, me. So let me t let me show you something, uh, dear sisters. You, the, one of the greatest enemies that we must deal with in this life is self. The Bible never said the devil is the exact opposition to God. 
the very thing that God that was ranked in the Bible side by side as an enemy to God is self. He said, so those who live according to self, Romans chapter 8, cannot please God. Self, be careful when the enemy is you. So, okay, I just saw money in my jota. If I was like the other woman now, what would I be thinking of? What can I do with this? I first counted to know how much. But the woman that God created knows that mm -mm, even this, even if I saw this, thank God for this provision. But it came from someone. So let's ask the someone, what do we do with it? And what is my share inside? And can I tell you something? When you live like that with God, you walk in abundance. I discovered that you cannot, you, you cannot find a wealthy person who is stingy. It's not possible. You may find a rich, stingy person. Maybe he did Yahoo Yahoo and you know the Juju say you must not give the money to anybody you must spend. But a truly wealthy man in the kingdom can never be stingy. And what will, what will make you go all out? Because to be a helper means you, know, you are not living for yourself. You are living to serve and support another person. And before you begin to say, eh, but they'll use me like rag. That's the Christian life. Galatians 2.20. But I've been crucified with Christ. He said, yet not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The Christian life is a life of death to self. You forget about you and concentrate on another person. Because when you keep looking at you, you have to take care of you and sustain you. But when you forget about you and look at how you can help that man walk in his God-ordained destiny, God got your back. That's the reason why I will always be strong to preach. You know why? Everything I do is not for me. It's for people. So God will ensure that all grace will abound. If I'm sick, I have to be fine. If I'm broke, I have to be blessed. Why? Because this man's life affects many other people. But watch those who live for themselves. And today we come against that enemy called self. In the name of Jesus. My time is almost running now. Number three points there. I said she was, for the woman, she was created from man who was in God's image. But for Eve, the other female, she's what? A product of the fallen man. This one was created from the man who was in God's image. God's image. God's image. Remember, God took out of the rib. Alright? And created. Why? Because that man was in the image of God. So this woman that came out of that man was carrying the image of God. So when a woman sees that she can be great, she can succeed, she can become anything she wants to be, but her greatest purpose is to ensure that she she leaves the fulfillment of her purpose derived from a divine plan of God in the life of a man. I'm being careful with English because I know many of you, some of you are GBV supervisors. I know what they have trained you with. But when she sees that this is her highest calling, she can be a banker, she can be a CEO, she can have a PhD. She can even be a pastor. But when she sees that her highest calling is to be fulfilled as the derivative of God's divine plan in the life of a man, then she's created in the image of God. But look at the product of the fallen man. The Bible says she was the mother of all living. Eve. She took the fruit ate it, gave some to her husband. And there's a problem, oh, because we have a lot of Eves today. We have two races of females on the earth. We have women and we have Eves. Can I tell you something? Check your Bible very well. Go back and read it. All of Jacob's children, it was his wives that were naming them. Till they got to Benjamin. They ruled over the house. Every. That's why the names were funny. 
when Leah gave birth to Reuben, she named the child not according to God's purpose. You know why? Because she tried to usurp authority. He was the man that was supposed to speak into existence the purpose of the children. But she usurped authority out of her envy that her husband didn't like her, he liked the other woman. So she named Reuben. She said, at least now, this is the reason why she gave him that name. This is the meaning of the name of a man that you gave birth to. At least now, my husband will look at me. So are we living life to prove a point to people or to create, you know, many of us are, we stop, stop trying to give or create impressions to the wrong people. Am I too hot for you this morning? <laughs> Giving names out of jealousy was rivalry. Then Simeon. Then Levi. She said, now my husband will join to me. Hey, I don't give and treat you. Then I don't come up and from her hand. So, but the man loved Rachel. Then she now gave birth to Judah. She said, okay, even if you know, look my place, I'll still praise God. At least it's God that gave all the children. That's why she named him Judah. Even if you don't look my side, I still praise God. At least I have. Look at all the names. It was when they came to Benjamin that Jacob said, No, this cannot happen. And Jacob, when the woman was dying, in her pain, she called him son of my sorrow. You know, you know, that's the reason why God didn't put us in charge. He put man. You know why? Because we are emotional creatures. And God never designed emotions to be the government of your decisions. Because emotions can change. You can be high this morning and you are down in the evening. Meanwhile, God remains God. So don't try to teach God what he knows. Just because you gave back to him in pain, you decide to destroy his destiny. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But his mother called him Jabez. What does Jabez mean? He will cause sorrow. Why? Because you had complications at childbirth. You destroy an entire race. Because when you gave name to that man, it was not just that man, it was that man and the seed in him. Oh yeah, because when God calls a man, he said to Abraham and his seed. When God was talking to Abraham, when Abraham was tithing to Melchizedek, the Bible says in Hebrews 7 that Levi was in his loins. So you, it's not just that child that will suffer. The next generation, some of you here, that's why we'll pray in the afternoon. Some of you here, you have great destinies, but you are a product of spite or envy. Somebody felt bad and made a declaration. But today God has sent me as a man from him, from above, to change every error that is in your destiny. According to the authority of another man called Jesus. Shout amen to that. Yeah. Say, son of my sorrow. Because I gave by the so my... Jacob said, no way. This thing has to end. After 11 children, the Bible says, Jacob, but Jacob called him Benjamin, the son of my right hand. And Benjamin became the strongest tribe in Israel. Even when Israel was fighting Benjamin, they went to sacrifice. They sowed seed to God. They sacrificed. They fasted, prayed. Those ones were drinking. They were the ones at fault. They went to fight, but they defeated them twice. Why? Because a man said, you are the son of my right hand. He told Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, he said, Benjamin is like a, a, like a wolf, a ravenous wolf. He divides the prey in the morning and the spoils at evening. That means he's a conqueror day and night. And that's who you are. That's your destiny. So you forget about all these single, single sister, single lady. Think, I'll just be a single mother. All these men in our day. I'll just be a just have my children and go like that. I hope you are ready to still do that after this teaching. <laughs> that doesn't mean, you know, you know, some there are many reasons why people end up to be, but just for you to decide that I will not, I will just give birth and be a single woman. Something's wrong with you. You need deliverance. You are act, acting out of un, a lack of understanding. And I suspect that's a generational curse. Amen. You love me. I wanted to give you the examples 
Or you could go read. I think you can get the slide. They can look at it. Sarah was one example. So example of the woman. God's woman. You find Sarah. Alright. The Bible says Sarah was submissive in the fear of God to her husband. To the point where she called her husband Lord. I remember I was counseling a woman. Um, years ago. About so a year or so ago. And she was telling me that she was having problems with her husband. You know was not flowing again no more communication wasn't talking she doesn't know this and that and all of that even though he lost his job recently so she's the one providing for the family and all while she was talking and there the holy spirit told me to ask her when was the last time she knelt down to serve her husband food it's not me it's the holy ghost that asked me and then while i was counseling there this scripture flashed in my mind this is someone that was married for over five years. She said it was on her wedding day that she knelt down to serve him. You know that thing that they do on wedding day, that that film, film trick, Jackie Chan, now carry the cake like this. And I tell you, one of the things, to, one of the greatest ways to trap a man is submission. What seems to be your highest weakness is your greatest strength. The Bible says, submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil. And what will happen? He will flee. The reason why principalities and powers are subject to us is because we are submitted to Christ, the head. Let's break away first and watch what happens. So when I deal with a lot of women, counsel a lot of women, and I find a lot of afflictions, all kinds of things in the bodies and the lives of many women, to a large extent, their submission component is questionable. Don't worry. I know what you are saying in your mind. Apostle, you need to tell them that, oh no, when they have a men's conference, we'll talk there. You hear your own for yourself. But in opposed to Sarah, Jezebel. Look at that. Let me round up the story there. Jezebel was someone who loved power. She wanted to be in control. There are a lot of women who feel that if they don't devise strategies to control their man, they cannot get him to love them. But it is better when a woman gives birth naturally in labor than when she's induced midwife yes or no that inducing was not the original thing they just did it to help so it is better the man loves you naturally don't manipulate him to love you you get a puppet in your hand and when you need him to be in charge you have reduced him to a puppet That's witchcraft by definition anyway. No, I'm not hard. I'm just, I'm just showing you the Bible. Did God manipulate us to love him? Did God manipulate us to serve him? Did they point a gun to you and say, give your life to Christ? And we are the bride of Christ. No be so. So why manipulate your man? You are not sick, oh. But you claim that you are sick because you need him to show some care for you a little. It's not you don't need. It's not because you want him to buy anything. You just want him to be caring a little. If you want him to be caring, show care. Anything you want, sow it. That's what Jesus said. I don't know the one that you said. If a man needs his wife to submit to him. He needs to learn to listen to her. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21, first, it says, submit to one another in the fear of God. There are times where the man needs to say, only you are right, we are going your way. It doesn't take anything from him. But many of them are so proud and pompous. That, well, I wish they were here. You know, don't worry, we'll have a men's conference, I believe. Now come for them there. But you collect your cola not now. If you are happy, shout amen. amen. Jezebel, this was the story of Naboth's vineyard. 
Ahab wanted the vineyard. Naboth said, God forbid that I give you my father's inheritance. And God had told them in the book of Leviticus that a man was not supposed to sell his generational inheritance. And even if it was sold at the year of Jubilee, it should be given back. All right? Ahab came back home. He knew it was impossible and he was angry and went to bed. This kind, well, maybe let's just. But Jesus came to him and said, Why is your face like this? Ahab said, Ah, this man refused to give me his vineyard. Jesus said, Ah, are you not the king of Israel? Stand up and eat. I will give you. And the Bible says she wrote letters. That Jezebel, the Jezebelic spirit, we need to cast it out of the body of Christ. It's a spirit. It works both in men and women. I wish I had time to show you the characteristics of Jezebelic spirits. Even men. There are some men that are more Jezebelic than women. It's truth. She wrote letters. Only God knows. Look at what she wrote in the letter. The wisdom of witchcraft. She t- said, gather all the people of Israel and the elders and sit that Naboth in a place of honor. So he will think they want to honor him. He said, then bring two useless people that will place a false accusation. And one of the commandments, thou shall not bear false witness against and the Bible says she sealed that letter with Ahab's seal. So that when they read it, they will think it was Ahab who wrote it. So that generation, all of them died thinking it was Ahab that killed Naboth. Meanwhile, it was Jezebel. And there are women who act like that. You manipulate. Allow it to come the way it is. No, you manipulate it. Continue. Now, you see, when you begin to manipulate people, the spirit of witchcraft because witchcraft is manipulation intimidation and control these two things these three things manipulation intimidation and control when you practice the art of manipulation continually and there are many ways you do it you do it by seduction you do it oh yes now we have all these fashion houses and all of that from europe and godless nations not knowing their agenda and they sow all kinds of things there's even a perfume they call seduction what's the meaning of that you tell me it's a christian that produced that well, me, I don't know. i'm a young man who, i'm pastoring young people i know all those things what do you think they're trying this system of this world is being controlled by eves seduction make them buy it any way possible so they make the skirt you say now so we buy and that's how it is that's how we bought it but the slit is from 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 jerusalem to samaria and they walk up and down and you you now you are now you have so practiced manipulation you are now a puppet of the spirit of manipulation I don't have time to tell you, but in the ministry of deliverance, if you talk to any pastor who is a bit experienced in deliverance, you will hear many things you don't want to hear. That 70% of people's problems or spirits in their life came as a result of them. I counseled one from Kaduna two days ago. Went to this place, went to Glory Dome for prayers, went to this man of God, went there, went there, went there. I said, no. It's not this is not your problem let's get to the problem after 40 minutes of conversation i found out where the problem was you know i would have just gone in the name of jesus be healed no when you have prayed in the name of jesus and the situation is not changing then there's something that is not allowing your authority to manifest because satan is an illegitimate spirit on earth so if he refuses to go in the name of Jesus then he has some form of legitimacy in that person's life that person invited them and you know that's witchcraft is a human partnering with spirit agencies the spirit cannot just come to a family and destroy people no they need a legal tender they need someone to be an access a medium that's why witches in the bible were called what mediums and i'm telling you that you don't need to go to fetish power to be a medium this is it manipulate as spirit of jezebel another woman was abigail first samuel chapter 25 
She had a foolish husband, but her submission saved her household. And eventually the foolishness of the man killed him. And when it was time for David, when, when you know, David heard that the woman had died, he was coming to meet the, he sent servants to the woman and made a proposal to her. And the woman gathered everything and said, I will serve you. God has made you a king and I will stay by your side until you fulfill that destiny. But what of Delilah? <laughs> Judges chapter 16, the Bible says, Delilah was trying to know the strength, you know, the source of Samson's strength. And then when she found out in verse 19, the Bible says that she lulled him to sleep. I don't know what she did. Did she put a love portion in the drink? I don't know what she did to make him sleep. But eventually the man slept. That's the power. So when we say the power of a woman, you can actually use it for good or for bad. When you use it submissively, it is for good. When you use it to exert control, it's for bad. Fire is a good servant and a bad master. So is money. Money is meant to serve, but if money begins to create servants of people, it has become a weapon of destruction. And the Bible says in that verse 19 that she began to torment his soul. I, I wish you had, could you put the scripture for us? Do you have it in NIV? There's no need to go to the second slide. My time is up. We'll just pray and finish. Could you put it for us? I want to show you something. Just something there. Verse 19. King James, New King James says she tormented him. Okay, if you don't have it, no problem. She tormented him. And when I was reading that place in New King James, he used the word torment. And one of the characteristics of demons is to torment. You remember our teaching on warfare? She tormented. So something started. His weakness was not just as a result of his hair leaving him. His weakness was also because of the torment to his soul. Whatever Delilah did to him, dear, is beyond what is written in English. And so began to subdue him. And God said, we are the ones that should do what? Subdue the earth. To subdue means to bring under control. So by the time these Philistines came, he was already a vegetable. Because a woman sold him out. A woman sold a great deliverer, a great judge. He was given birth to by a woman. A great deliverer in Israel. He was sold by a woman. So my question this morning is, which of these women or which of these females will you be? Put the second slide. Let me run it in, in two minutes. Are you going to fall under the woman or you are going to fall under Eve? So I did a contrast between the world's woman and God's woman. And I want you to see a few things there. The first thing is materialism versus contentment. So write it, write it like this. The world's woman versus God's woman. Let's compare the characteristics. The world's woman versus God's woman. Under the world, she's materialistic. All about clothes and money and shoes and bags and the things of this life. She judges success by what she has achieved not by the joy of fulfillment she lives her life for the things that are seen and the bible says we look not at the things that are seen but at the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal a man's life does not consist of the abundance but this world woman no if she doesn't have like others she's not a woman but god's woman believes that godliness and contentment is what great gain and that scripture, the next verse says, For we brought nothing into this world, and we will certainly move. That's the reason why even when you lose a millionaire, you will still walk around fine. 
because at the end of the day it was not your own we have nothing in this world i know you bought land you say i'm the landlord when you fall down and die and appear before god will you appear with the land will you appear with the lease what's that in the sofa for wedding i should be if i don't do i should be for my wedding you know go oh no we must do i should be how much 75k you see my own and i will not so must we show the whole world that we are broke our god is a rich god and you you know the manipulation con- consent you can twist anything even satan said for he shall give his angels shall just jump there he's, he's written there and i always ask myself this is one question that's why no matter what i lose doesn't it doesn't change me if i die this night and appear before god will i carry anything there not even the clothes i'm wearing Bible says flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Even this cloth you are wearing, you can't appear there with it. So while we manage everything God has given us and utilize it very well for our comfort and for humanity and for the kingdom, you live as a steward every day. So you lose one million, you are the same. You gain 10 million, you are the same person. Nothing motivates you. I will not stand there and preach because of money. No. Number two, security versus support. The world woman think we marry for security. So marry the man, we get money, we go take care of you. See the way your mama suffer? No go suffer like that. Oh. They are already in a relationship. Oh. They are already just in relationship. They never marry. Say, so he's not giving my brother anything. I'm not giving my sister anything. He has not come to take us out for ice cream. Because the world woman does not believe that she can achieve and stand on her own. No. She has to depend. That's the, the dependency mentality. And in northern Nigeria is a demonic stronghold that has to be broken. A natural northern Nigerian woman marries for security. Quote me anywhere. I said natural. Not the one that is born again and the mind is transformed. When you go to Adamawa, Nayanga, you know why? Because it's land of beauty. So they feel that because of their beauty, the whole world should bow at their feet. That's a natural Adamawa lady. No, see, uh, these things, these are things I've studied. We live in territories, we don't study the trends around. I said a natural. When you come to Bornunko, if you go around the Margi, a little bit of Babur, but more of Margi. They still have that thing. But a natural Bornu woman believes that whatever she does in the house is second class. So she can never have enough. She can never do enough. It's always the husband money. But her government salary she's collecting is for herself, small, small. And that's why after 20 years is when she bought a Corolla. A small Corolla car, and nobody will drive the car. Only her. Right? <laughs> That's a natural Borno woman. When you go to Taraba, natural Taraba woman, lady, they are like the Calaba of the North. They train them to know how to cook, to know how to do house chores. Why? Because wife material. They believe that that's who a wife material is. But God's woman believes that she is a support system to the man. I asked one of our brothers, he was telling me one day, he was talking to his wife to be then, he's married now. He told you, they were talking about something, now told the wife, say, see, I marry you for help, oh, and I help are fine. Support system. The man can look at you and say, please, honey, can you give me 250? There's so much we have to do, and I run out of funds. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you in two weeks. And God's woman that has utilized her wisdom and her hands are not idle, say, take 300. You can pay me back in bits. But the world's woman, she has it. Only I don't get to, I don't get to, I don't get to. I will go do now. They go to a place, they are stranded. The man didn't come with his ATM card or his bank card, his alerts, you know, his, his account is red. And the woman has money, but she'll be there. Oh, honey, what will we do now? Honey, you know, <laughs> please sit down. The Bible says, we'll appear before the judgment seat of Christ everything that man does he will give account of it you know we can escape here but not before the righteous judge 
because that day it will be shown on the screen that you had 20,000 in your account but you people were stranded in that place and you did nothing I don't want to look at God like that what's the next one? beauty the world woman sees that it's all about her beauty that's where she gets her image from her beauty and when you talk about the beauty it's just the body so that woman my question to her is now she's 25 she's a diva by the time she's 45 i hope she'll still be a diva a goddess a blood that long attachment every chair i move around it's all about my beauty but the bible says in proverbs 31 30 what did he say there beauty is fading and charm is deceitful but a woman that fears the lord shall be so your beauty is not about your face or your looks your beauty is the fear the reverence of god that you have in your heart there are seven things that the fear of god can do for a man i don't have time to show you today next one quickly we need to close now it's 11 already the world's woman think she has to make up herself to fit a standard she feels inside that she cannot be enough so she has to make up to fit there but god's woman feels i can rise and step up to that standard you're not talking to me today do you like me don't stone me oh. i hope you guys are active now just in case anything happens you just carry me from here she hardly looks at her natural face in the mirror and admires her beauty. So she does the makeup and some of them will now overdo it. Why? You know why? They are trying to reach a false standard. They are trying to attain a false standard that is not them. Quit trying to create an impression. You are already the impression. He created you like that. Oh, you can clap for yourself better. Rather, what you should do is step up your reasoning. He already made you a first-class citizen. He made you the crown of his creation. He made you beautiful in his eyes. And a man that sees you beautiful is the man that came in his image. So step up your mind to fit with who you are. Because that's who you are already. You know, when we come into Christ, we are already born again. In our spirit, we are already existing in perfection. All we are doing by renewal of our minds is to rise mentally to fit with that impression that we already are. That's why it's all about what you have in Christ. This is who you are. So just change your mentality to fit with it. But the world's woman is always makeup. Next one. The world's woman think I have to manipulate everybody to get what I want. God's woman says, no, I don't need to manipulate. I will submit to God and the father of all spirits. And that God that I submit to can go and trouble my husband in the night. And while I'm still sleeping, he'll wake up and transfer the money to my account. Haven't you seen people like that? They quarreled that day. The woman shouted on the woman, shouted on the woman. She was just quiet and he went out. Then later in the evening, he now comes in the bedroom and says, oh, honey, no vex, no vex. <laughs> Some proud ones will not kneel down. They will just say, they will buy meat pie when they are coming. When you see a married man buying something when he's coming, he's coming to appease the gods. The gods are not stones and wood. The gods is somebody with figure eight. Right? Next slide. Next one. Yes, this is where I close. The world woman stays on one of these extreme when it has to do with the success of a home a family succeeding corporately in destiny these are two extremes independence and dependence there are two extremes that you should not find yourself in i am not saying don't do something to earn a living no i am not saying don't do something to help yourself before you before you become a support you should be able to help yourself first that you are in a relationship for one year and he didn't give you one naira even though that is not too good as per brotherly love that is not good but you should have no problem with that because you are enough you leave him for god yes 
You live in for God. You meet somebody for the first time. It's not up to a year. You want to start collecting, collecting. No. Can I tell you something? Single ladies. Never collect anything or ask anything from a man you meet for the first time. Rather see how you can add. You know what will happen? If he's a godly man, if he's a wise man, he'll be the one fighting to give to you. But from the first meeting, you're already a parasite. So, independence means I'm self-sufficient. I don't need a man. In fact, I can be a single lady. All these men and their wives. No, no, I just have my children and serve God like that. After I have my business, I have my career, this and that one. You and your husband have small quarrel. You are staying in uh, first uh, where where? Let me use Lagos. You are staying in Ikeja, and you pack your things and go and rent a flat in 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 Lekki. Until he come and beg me, I'm not going back. That's independence. That's an extreme. Another extreme is dependence. Everything Nahim. Bishop, please stand up. Let me show you something. Stand in the front. You are the helper, isn't it? Now imagine I'm supposed to help him, okay? But now I'm leaning on him. What's happening? He's doing everything to keep us together. If we stay like this for one hour, he'll get tired, yes or no? And, and collapse. Imagine if you wake up in, your, in the morning and your neck is so painful, he can't carry your head. And this is the woman. Let me show you something about this place as I round up. This place is one of the most important parts of your body. This is where your, your spinal cord passes through the vertebra column to the waist. Your backbone that supports your entire body is from here. Yes, the man is the head, is the brain. But a part of the brain is in this spinal cord. There are motions in your body that this, it, it, if it was to go to the brain for approval, you will not be able to move with speed. It needs your spinal cord. So if anything happens to this place and it, it collapses, this man is a vegetable. That's if he's not dead. That's who you were created to be. Sit down, sir. I think we can close here. So, but that's the, the extreme is independence and dependence. But God's woman belief is about interdependence. I have something to bring. But my something must meet your something. And okay, yes, you lost your job. But my something can hold us together until you get your job. And you don't just go and say, hey, God, look for a job now. What's wrong with you? You get on your knees and pray. What is fighting my husband's breakthrough? You can even sow seed from your salary and he brings his job. God promised Abraham a child. For years he didn't come. It was when God ate the food that Sarah prepared. That God said according to the time of life. We can close here. 